Hi guys, I'm here today with another book haul. Um, the last time I did a book haul I believe was in April, so it's definitely been a while. Um, I'm gonna try and do these more regularly so that it's not as insane each time because I have a lot of books to show you. Some are books that I bought myself, some are from publishers, so without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so first up, way back at the beginning of May, um, I was on vacation in LA and I ran to the bookstore because there was quite a few books that came out on like May 5th, I think it was, and I had to have them. One of which was Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han. Um, I went to Barnes and Noble to pick this up and it's quite cool because the dust jacket underneath was a Barnes and Noble exclusive, which I think is just really cute of Laura Jean in her room. One thing that I didn't realize until later on was that Jenny Han was actually going to be doing an event in Vancouver, which like no one ever comes to Vancouver. So me and the rest of the Owlcray girls were really excited to go see her. But at that event, I also bought a second copy from Chapters. Um, you had to buy a book there to be able to get a signature, which is fine with me. So now I've got two different copies of this lovely book. Um, this is the third and final book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy by Jenny Han. And if you haven't read this trilogy yet, please, please do it. It will make you so happy. Um, the synopsis kind of makes it seem like it's just this kind of silly like love story, but it's so much more than that. Um, and I think the overall kind of theme to the books is really to do with family, like first and foremost. Um, and it's just, it's just so great. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this, so I'm not going to mention too much more about it, but if you're looking for a cute contemporary book, um, definitely try out this trilogy. Another book that I picked up that day at Barnes & Noble was the movie edition of Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I have a ridiculous crush on Nick Robinson, so I actually wanted this movie cover. Normally movie covers for books are kind of lame, but I think this one's really cute. And Barnes & Noble had it in a hardback edition, which I haven't seen anywhere else. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited to have this book. Um, I love Nicola Yoon, and it's just gonna be really nice on my shelf next to her other books. Um, everything Everything is a story about a girl who is allergic to basically everything, so she hasn't really left her house um, her entire life, and the only people she really sees are her mom and her nurse. That is until a boy moves in next door and then things start to change. So it's a very good book, highly recommend. And the final book I picked up that day was A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. Uh, I feel like this book needs no introduction. Everybody is reading it and loving it. Um, it's all to do with like Fae and it's a really kind of epic fantasy trilogy and this is the final book with these sets of characters. Um, there's gonna be more books in the future featuring some of the side characters, I believe. And yeah. So I don't do this too often, but there's definitely a couple authors where I want to collect like every edition that exists of their book. Some might think that that's frivolous, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I like having, I like supporting these authors. They're like my favorite authors. And so I went on to Book Depository and I bought the UK editions of the Darker Shades of Magic books by V.E. Schwab, because I really like the UK covers. Um, they're like quite different from the American ones, but still have like the same color scheme and everything. And this is just one of my favorite trilogies of all time. And I'm really happy that I can add this to my shelf. And in that same vein, another book that I also bought on Book Depository was this beautiful edition of the Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. You guys know that I am a massive fan of The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I never shut up about it. And I also really adore this one too. Um, this is just a standalone novel that she wrote uh, all about these like magical water horses. Um, and it's just such a beautiful book. And this cover. I love it. If you aren't familiar with Book Depository, it's basically a website where you can often buy like different editions of books and there's free shipping, so it's awesome. So another book that I recently picked up was the paperback edition of Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I actually ordered this online from her local bookstore where you could have her sign and personalize it to you. So I love Rainbow and I collect her books as well, so I had to have this one. The cover is just so much fun. This is like Rainbow Rowell's only fantasy novel and I just absolutely adore this story. I'm sure you guys already know what it's about, but basically in Rainbow Rowell's book Fangirl, the main character Kath writes fan fiction for this fictional like fantasy series um, called Simon Snow. And this book is technically like Rainbow Rowell's fan fiction of the Simon Snow story. It's kind of 
hard to explain, but if you read Fangirl, you'll understand. But this book was just so much fun and I absolutely love this edition. So back in May, another thing that we did here at Owl Crate is we decided to all go see the Everything Everything movie together. Um, we made a vlog of that little adventure, so if you want to watch that, I'll leave a link to that down below. And when we were at the mall, we obviously had to go into the bookstore, so I picked up a few books when I was there as well. So the first book that I got that day was The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. I've talked about this book a whole bunch on this channel. I absolutely loved it. It's essentially a story about a girl summer at this camp um, for troubled youth and she's a like a camp counselor there and she's also dealing with her mother having cancer for the second time um, it is just really emotional and wonderful and I absolutely love it another book I picked up that day was Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy I absolutely adore Julie Murphy we included her book Dumplin way back in like September 2015 in an owl crate box um, I think she just writes such realistic and lovable characters and as far as I know, this story is a lot to do with a girl trying to figure out her sexuality. Um, and that's all I really need to know. I think it's going to be a perfect book to read this summer and I'm really excited. And then I also picked up Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCroix. Uh, this is a story about a girl who goes to Los Angeles and she's kind of in the film industry there, um, which I think will be such a unique setting for a story. And um, I've also heard that there is a lesbian romance in this. I'm always looking for more diverse books to read and everybody really, really loves this one. So I can't wait to pick it up. So at the end of May, early June, um, we all went to New York to take part in Book Expo and Book Con. And while we were there, we obviously had to stop at the Strand Bookstore. So I picked up a couple books there too. Um, first of which is The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. I obviously love this book. Uh, we included it in an Owl Crate box in the past and it's one of my favorite books of all time. Um, this is the new paperback edition and I just had to have it for my collection. Um, I love the typography on the cover and then it has like a flap where it's like a really nice photo in there and yeah, I just love it. And then I also picked up The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore, which I've also talked a lot about this book on the channel recently. Um, I just absolutely loved it. One of my favorite books of the year. It's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet type story, but it's such a unique setting um, between like two families that deal with the circus and they're kind of like rival circus troops. And I just thought it was awesome. Almost done with the books I bought. Uh, these are just the last couple ones that I picked up randomly throughout the last few months. Um, I had to get my finished copy of When Dimple Met Rishi by Sanya Menon. This is also one of my favorite books of the year, which I've been talking a lot about. I feel like everybody has been really loving this book lately. Um, it's a story about two Indian American teens um, whose parents have kind of set up an arranged marriage for them. Rishi knows about this, but Dimple does not, and it just kind of follows what happens after they meet for the first time at a kind of like technology summer camp. And it's just super cute and diverse, and I just love it. So yeah, definitely needed my finished copy of that. And another book that I picked up recently and I can't wait to read is Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. This is the sequel to The Savage Song, which we also included in an Owl Crate box last year. Um, I just love Victoria Schwab's writing so much. Um, everything that she does is like super atmospheric with really fantastic characters. And I just can't wait to see how this duology wraps up. And the final book that I bought for myself um, really recently actually is Because You Love to Hate Me, which is a short story anthology edited by Anne-Marie. Um, this is a really unique anthology because she's paired together 13 booktubers with 13 different authors and together they've written stories all about villains, which just sounds so cool. Um, there's authors like Renee Audier, Adam Silvera, Victoria Schwab, Marissa Meyer, and a whole bunch of other great, great authors. And I just can't wait to read this. Um, I've been anticipating this book for a really long time and I'm just excited to see what it's all about. All right, so now I'm gonna get into some of the books that publishers have sent me. Um, first up is a couple books from Penguin. So thank you Penguin for sending these. The first one I wanna talk about is Chaotic Good by Whitney Gardner. This is a book all about a girl who's super into like cosplay and designing costumes and she also really loves comics but unfortunately the only comic shop in her town is staffed by a guy who kind of has the thought process that girls can't be into geek culture which is super lame. And I guess what happens is um, the main character, her name's Cameron, she decides to dress up as her twin brother and kind of get into this kind of culture of like Dungeons and Dragons and things like that at the comic shop, but everybody thinks that she's a guy. And yeah, it just looks like this really funny book all about her experiences with this group of like nerdy guys. Um, 
looks like she might meet somebody there in that group and it just sounds like really fun. I requested this book just because it kind of reminded me of Eliza and her monsters in that it's all about like geek culture and fandom and I think it's gonna be a really fun read. And another book that Penguin sent me is The Beauty That Remains by Ashley Woodfolk. And how gorgeous is this cover? I don't know too much about this book other than it deals with a group of friends that are super into art and music and then something tragic happens to them and art is no longer enough for them and I think it's just gonna be a pretty hard-hitting contemporary novel all about friendship which is you know I love books like that so I'm excited to pick this one up. So next up this stack of books are all from Harper so thank you Harper Collins for sending these my way. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Beyond a Darkened Shore by Jessica Leake. And I also really adore this cover too. So it looks like this is a fantasy novel all about um, this princess named Ciara who has the ability to control her enemies' minds. So she that's how she keeps her people safe. Um, until she starts seeing like visions of this crow. And this crow begins telling her that an even larger threat is on the way. Um, one day she is led to meet this boy named Leaf who is supposed to be her enemy but when she finds out that he also can see these visions they kind of form a pack together and it just sounds like you know like a really epic dark fantasy which I'm excited to try out and then they also sent me Winter Folk by Janelle Colby this um, the synopsis was pretty vague but it kind of sounds like it's a bit magical realism which I like so I'm excited to like read it. It's about a girl who lives in a homeless community outside of Seattle. The community is called Winterfolk and she collects fallen stars and keeps them by her tent. But then one day the city of Seattle uh, plans to remove this homeless community and the main character Rain and her family suddenly have nowhere else to go. Yeah, so it just kind of sounds like a really interesting synopsis to me and not really like anything else I've read before, so I'm looking forward to finally checking this one out. And they also sent One Dark Throne by Kendara Blake, which is the sequel to Three Dark Crowns, which we included in our September 2016 Owl Crate box. That book left off on such a crazy cliffhanger, so I can't wait to pick this one up and see what happens after the events of the first book. Three Dark Crowns is about three sisters who are triplets who essentially have to fight each other to the death to decide who will get the throne. So it's a pretty gruesome uh, dark fantasy with a lot of twists and I can't wait to read the sequel. So next up they also sent me The Midnights by Sarah Nicole Smetana. This is a book about a girl who is a singer-songwriter and she's always wanted to impress her father who was a former rock star with her music but when he dies unexpectedly everything changes. Um, looks like this book kind of takes place after her mother has uprooted them to a new town to kind of get a fresh start while they're dealing with their grief and it's just kind of about her rediscovering herself and who she wants to be after her father has passed on so it sounds like a really interesting contemporary they also sent winter glass by lexa hillier which is the sequel to spindle fire which came out last year which i haven't read unfortunately but um i believe that was like a fairy tale retelling uh, about sisters so yeah, now that I have the sequel, maybe I can kind of like binge read both books together. Um, I'm absolutely in love with the covers of these books and it just kind of sounds like a really nice like fairy tale story. And then finally, they also sent Three Sides of a Heart, which is a short story anthology all about love triangles. Um, now normally love triangles are kind of annoying, so I'm not sure how I'm going to take to this book, but I'm still really intrigued by the concept of it. Um, it definitely has some great authors who contributed. So I think this will be like a fun book. I might pick it up this summer as well. I also received a couple of really great books from Macmillan. So thanks so much Macmillan for sending me these. I love them both. The first of which is A Girl Like That by Tanaz Bathina. Sorry if I pronounced that last name wrong. Um, I've already read this, absolutely adored it. So this book actually takes place in Saudi Arabia and I had never read a book that took place there so it was super interesting. Um, it's about a girl named Zarin who is an orphan and a risk taker, um, but she also has a pretty bad reputation in her community as kind of being a troublemaker um, and a little bit promiscuous, like always dating boys. Um, and then the story starts off with um, the religious police in Saudi Arabia finding Zarin in a car accident with another boy from the community. They are both dead, unfortunately. And then the story kind of goes in reverse from there and you kind of figure out like what events led to this car accident. I thought it was like a super unique look at a culture that's very different from mine. It is an own voices author who's actually Canadian, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, I just 
really, really enjoyed it. It was different from anything I've read this year, and I highly recommend you guys picking it up. And the second book they sent me was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I also really, really enjoyed this one. But this is the story of a girl named Alice, and um, the story begins with her and her mother always being on the run, and bad luck seems to follow them everywhere they go. Um, but then when her grandmother, who was this very famous author of a collection of fairy tales, dies, and kind of leaves the estate that she lived in, which was called the Hazel Wood, things get even worse. Alice's mother is kidnapped and taken from her, and so this is kind of the journey that Alice takes to the Hazel Wood, looking for her mother and trying to save her. Um, I thought it was such an interesting fantasy novel in that a lot of it deals just within our own, like, real world. It's quite dark and the magic unfolds itself slowly and I just thought it was such a great story. Alright, so I also got a couple of books from Simon & Schuster to show you guys. The first is Last Star Burning by Caitlin Sangster. Uh, it sounds like this is just a high fantasy novel about a girl who is wrongly accused of setting off a horrific bombing in her city and she has to flee the city. She ends up leaving the city with a pretty unlikely companion, the chairman's son named Howell. And I think this is just kind of the story of how they survive outside of the city's walls. And I just love the cover. It looks like it's going to be a pretty cool fantasy read. They also sent me This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. So I absolutely adore this cover. Um, it doesn't really give you much to go off of on the back, so I'll just read what it says on the back. It says, if you're reading this, it means I am dead have completed a Hydra vaccine, our last chance at survival, you must decrypt it, never let them take you. So, sounds like it's gonna be a pretty intense book, um, kind of about science and survival and stuff like that, so I'm excited to give it a try as well. All right, and then I also got some books from Little Brown, and I absolutely love these books too. The first is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Um, I featured this book in our June wrap-up video, so I'll leave a link to that video down below too if you want to hear more of my thoughts. Essentially, this is a story about a girl who is kidnapped from the human world and taken to the fairy realm, and it's all about how she survives amongst all of these different fairies and the royal court there. And then they also sent Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ellie, which I liked so much, and I also mentioned this in my June wrap-up. So this is actually a Western, but it takes place in the future, which I thought was really cool, and it's about a girl who is a sharpshooter who runs away from the compound that she calls home and ends up in kind of like a really fancy, like, lawless city, um, and she joins the theater troupe there. And it's all about, like, political intrigue and things like that, and it was super, super good. So thank you so much to Little Brown for sending these. I loved both of them so much. And I also have one book from Scholastic to show you guys, and that is called Ink by Alice Broadway. So in this story, um, basically from the moment you're born, everything that kind of happens to you in your life is marked as a tattoo on your skin. It says here, there are honorable remarks that let people know you're trustworthy and shameful tattoos that announce you as a traitor. And it also says, after her father dies, Leora finds solace in the fact that his skin tells a wonderful story. That is, until she glimpses a mark on the back of his neck, the symbol of the worst crime a person can commit in Saintstone, which is their city. Leora knows it has to be a mistake, but before she can do anything about it, the horrifying secret gets out, jeopardizing her father's legacy and her life. It sounds like this is like a really interesting story that's like a mix of fantasy as well as dystopian, and I am just super intrigued to read it. And then the last four books I have to show you guys were all given to me by authors that I'm friends with. So the first one I wanted to show you is Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Um, Adam Silvera gave this to me at BookCon. Um, the company that he works for, Paper Lantern Lit, they helped bring this book to life. Um, if you didn't know, Kristen Ritter is actually the main star of the Netflix show Jessica Jones, and this is a novel by her. Um, I don't know anything about it, and I actually don't want to know anything about it because it's a thriller, and I think it's really fun to go into thrillers not knowing any details so that you're pleasantly surprised. But yeah, if you're into kind of like suspense novels, then I would definitely recommend picking this one up. Uh, I absolutely love the cover and it comes out in November. And next up, I wanna talk about Welcome Home, which is a short story anthology all about adoption. It's edited by Eric Smith and I'm so happy that he was able to send me a copy. Um, I definitely think we need more stories about adoption out there as so many people are adopted. I've mentioned this book on this channel quite a bit and this month I'm finally, finally going to make myself read it and I'm really, really excited. And next up, uh, author Danielle Clayton sent me her new book, The Bells, and I can't wait to read this. I absolutely love this cover. 
Um, I haven't looked into what this book is about too much, except for I know that it is kind of like a dystopian story where beauty is the most important thing in this society and it's about some girls who are raised to be bells. Bells are actually the people in this society that control beauty. So essentially, whenever anyone is born in this world, they are born um, like kind of gray and uh, the only way that they can become beautiful is if a bell bestows this power onto them. So it just sounds like a really interesting look at society and beauty and I just can't wait to read it. And last but certainly not least, I want to talk about Grey Wolf Island by Tracy Neithercourt. I'm so grateful that Tracy sent me this book. I finished it really late last night and I liked it so much. Um, it was kind of pitched to me as like if you're fans of the Raven Boys you'll like this and I definitely got those vibes and it's also kind of it like mixes the Raven Boys with the Goonies. That's a perfect description for it. It's about five kids who go to this island called Grey Wolf Island in search of treasure, but they soon find out that the island requires them to share their deep dark secrets in order to gain access to the treasure. Um, it's very, very atmospheric and the characters are wonderful and I just had a lot of fun reading it. This book comes out in October and I highly recommend adding it to your TBRs. So those were just some of the books that I received over the past three months. Um, let me know if you guys want me to start doing monthly book hauls because I can definitely arrange that for you. Did any of these books look intriguing to you? I'd also love to hear your thoughts. So let us know if any of these books looked interesting to you in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other bookish videos from us. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye-bye.